Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to this lightning talk on orchestrating large language models in production. My name is Hamsa Bhavarag, and I lead AI product strategy for Google Cloud. And I'm so thrilled to welcome my co-speaker, Harrison Chase, CEO and co-founder of Langchain. Let's give him a warm welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. So today, we're going to talk about building context-aware applications on Google Cloud along with Langchain. So Google Cloud offers one of the most differentiating portfolio of database services. We are extremely committed to open source and open standards. We work very closely with one of the most popular open source database engines, such as MySQL, Postgres, and Redis. So if your use case needs a microsecond level latency, memory store is a great managed option. We offer four Google native databases. If you're looking for high performance, real time data serving, Bigtable is a great option. If you're looking for a NoSQL document database, Firestore is a great choice. If your data is highly partitioned and you need high scalability performance and high availability, Spanner is a great choice. If you're not sure where to get started, and if you're looking to build Gen AI applications, we are positioning AlloyDB, one of our newer databases. It is Postgres compatible. It offers superior performance, about four times faster than standard Postgres on transactional workloads. And for real-time insights, it provides 100 times faster analytical queries. Irrespective of the database of choice, we strongly believe that databases bridge the gap between LLMs and Gen AI applications by strongly grounding your applications to the source of truth, which essentially resides in your enterprise databases. So this means that Gen AI applications can easily stitch, uh, Gen AI application developers can easily stitch their applications with databases and pull in the knowledge from these data sources. So what does this mean for you? This means that now we are bringing AI closer to data. Right now, we offer vector support across all our databases. So whether you're using AlloyDB or Cloud SQL or Spanner, you can now generate embeddings using your op on your operational data using SQL and store these embeddings right in the database. You can also do vector search, semantic similarity search in your database. This means there is zero data movement. And so makes it very easier for application developers to build those context-aware applications. Many of you would have heard of the term RAG. RAG typically stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. And it has been an evolving paradigm with Gen AI. So what this helps you to do is to tap in external knowledge from data sources such as Google Cloud databases. As I've been working with customers for the last few months, I've seen different types of RAG architectures emerge. The first is the Nave RAG, which is very simple, just three steps, indexing, retrieval, and generation. So in the first step, essentially what you're doing is you're breaking these documents into smaller chunks. And then you're, you're trying to create, you basically create embeddings for these, and then store it in a database like a Google Cloud database. Then in the retrieval, what you're doing is you're looking at the top K chunks that match your query. You're essentially doing a semantic similarity search. And then what you're doing in the generation step is you're using these top K chunks that you retrieved and then augmenting that with the question and sending it out to the LLM. The advanced rag has got the same three steps but uses advanced optimization strategies for both pre-retrieval and post-retrieval. Because in reality, you can't use the query as is. You might need to figure out where you're going to route the query to. You might need to rewrite the query. You might need to expand the query, and so on. Similarly, in the post-retrieval stages, you might need to re-rank some of the results that you've got. You might need to do some sort of a summarization or fusion, and so on. In both these steps, though, in, in both these architectures, both the Nave and the Advanced, you still see that the retrieval is very sequential. 
in the modular act that I've seen customers using, it's much more flexible because if you look at it, each of these are functional modules which are separate. So re-ranking is a separate module, retrieval is a sep uh, retrieving is a separate module, searching, and so on. So this offers higher flexibility. And if you look at it, the retrieval is not just sequential, but is iterative and adaptive. So what this basically means is, in, uh, in iterative retrieval, you're, go you're basically doing retrieval and generation back and forth until you pick enough knowledge and context from your databases. Now, in adaptive retrieval, you want to make sure that your rack system becomes so autonomous that it decides when it needs to keep doing retrieval and generation back and forth. Irrespective of the RAG architectures you're using, irrespective of the databases you're using, you're highly dependent on the technical stack and the tools that support you to quickly build RAG applications. This is where LangChain comes to play. And we realized early on that LangChain was one of the most popular frameworks today with over 5 million downloads every month. And so we invested, uh, end of February, we invested in LangChain. And we basically integrated all our Google Cloud databases with LangChain. So we offered three integrations, document loader, vector store, and chat messages memory. And since the last two months, we have seen soaring adoption from application developers. And they are telling us that it's extremely easy to build applications using LangChain and databases. They really love the interoperability benefit. They're able to swap the databases. They can now, instead of Cloud SQL PG, they're able to use AlloyDB for their particular use case and so on. And they love that they can still get the enterprise-grade features of our database, such as security, availability, performance, reliability, and so on. So now I'm going to hand over to, uh, to Harrison to talk a little bit about the use cases that we've been working together on. Absolutely. Thanks for that intro. Um, so as Hamza mentioned, I think about two months ago, we started working much more deeply on all of these integrations. Um, and I was really excited by that because there's actually a lot of different applications of uh, or places where you need databases inside your Gen AI application. So, so one of the most common ones and what Hamza has talked a lot about is using databases as some sort of vector store to do retrieval augmented generation. Um, and so I, I, I won't spend too much time here because I think she did a fantastic job doing an overview. That diagram you showed, I think everyone should have taken a picture of that. That was fantastic. Um, but yeah, the basic idea is Langchain and, and other just Gen AI apps in general combine LLMs with external sources of data and computation. A vector store for RAG is, is a key component of that. Another really big use case we see is actually enabling question answering over this more structured information itself. So people can write SQL, some people can write SQL, but a lot of people can't, or they, they don't know what certain columns are or what certain databases are. And so enabling a more seamless natural language to SQL experience has been one of the key applications we've seen developers building with LangChain. And so the basic idea here is that you'll use a language model to generate a SQL statement or, or to generate some sort of statement that gets passed to a semantic layer on top of a SQL database. Then that's executed against the database itself. And then you use that in conjunction with an LLM to create an answer. And so as you can see, there's a bunch of different steps that you need to chain together. And that database right there is really key to this whole part. It wouldn't work without it. And so enabling a bunch of examples and applications over that has been a big focus of ours as well. Hamza mentioned this, but chat message history is really important. So chat is by far the dominant UX that's emerged for a lot of these Gen AI applications. And so in order to do that, you need to store these messages somewhere. Um, and, and there's a lot of cool things you can do on top of these messages as well, which I think we're starting to just only tap into. So for example, if you have the whole history here, you can run kind of like asynchronous jobs in the background to extract information and use that information in future conversations. And so having a really solid foundation where you're storing this data, this data isn't just to like show in a, in a, in a chat UI. It's to learn information about your users. And so having, having a good database for that is incredibly important. Caching is another area where we've seen a bunch of integration points. So LLMs are expensive and take time. 
Um, and so one of the things that we've seen people doing is putting a cache in front of those uh, language models. Um, and the basic idea here is that with that cache, you can take uh, inputs of, of questions or of messages, see if there is an exact match, or in some cases, a similar match. And then uh, instead of calling the language model itself, you can just use that response. And, and, and so the exact caching is, is, is hopefully pretty clear. I think the really interesting part comes in with this semantic caching idea. And so the basic idea there is similar to RAG, where you would look up similar documents. What you're doing is you're looking up similar uh, questions and then getting back the responses. And I think there's actually a few ways to, to use this response once you get it back. One, you can just pass that directly to the user. But two, you could actually use like the three most similar responses um, and, and use those as few shot examples, or basically put those in the prompt. So there's a lot of really clever ways that you can combine this cache with your language model. And key in that is that it supports this kind of like similarity search and the similarity lookup because that's still kind of like the main way that developers are creating this cache. And so caching is, is a huge area of interest. The thing that I'll also emphasize, and so we covered four things here. We covered RAG, we covered SQL, we covered the chat message history, and now this cache. Most applications involve two or three or maybe all four of those different integrations. So when you're putting kind of like, you know, I think Langchain's known for, for creating a bunch of like agentic applications over, over your company's data. Your company has a lot of different types of data. It has unstructured data that probably belongs in a vector store. It has structured data in some, in some SQL tables. Generally, it's going to be exposed via chat, and so you have some sort of chat message history. And then caching, as, as mentioned, can really both improve the performance, but also the latency and cost. And so if you think about it that way, like it's not like you're just choosing one of these. You're really using all four of them in, in conjunction. Um, and I think that's, uh, that's a really powerful point to get across, is that there's a bunch of different databases you're going to need a bunch of databases as you build your Gen AI app. And so I think all these integrations, 25 packages, something like that. Yeah, so a really large number of packages that we've kind of worked uh, with Hamza and the whole Google team to, to, to develop. Um, they're actually also in their own uh, repo as well. So we have a Langchain Google repo. Um, it's, it's, uh, it, it's jointly maintained, and that's made kind of like the, the integrations there extremely tight. And so that's, uh, that, that's, I think that's all I have for, for my aspect of the talk.